Welcome and greetings to another pastor's devotional here at Calvary Chapel Grants Pass. Pastor Kevin led out with the topic of rest. So let's go ahead and pray and ask the Lord's blessing on this study. Father, thank you for today. And Lord, we recognize our need to be instructed in the word of righteousness. Help us, give us understanding through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So the topic of rest, and there's a lot we can do with this. Rest, rest from what, and then how. A couple of thoughts came to me, just two, in this topic of rest. And one we find in Hebrews chapter 4, and the author of Hebrews in verse 11 is saying, Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Let us therefore be diligent. In the King James Version, it says labor to enter that rest. Now, wait a second. I'm supposed to work hard to enter into rest. Well, exactly, and I'll explain that. Israel wandered in the wilderness 40 years and did not enter the promised land because of unbelief. That is, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb. Joshua being a type of Christ in this picture, and Caleb being a picture of the believing remnant, of which God always has a believing remnant on the earth. Israel to this day, by and large, is trying to attain unto righteousness through trying to keep the law. And Romans 3.28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Have you concluded that? that you're justified by faith and faith alone. So we would labor to come to that conclusion. Labor in word, the word of God, until we conclude that man is justified by faith alone, apart from the deeds of the law. Romans 10.4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Are you resting in the completed, finished work of Christ, or are you striving to please Him by trying harder? Faith is evidenced by ceasing from your own efforts and simply trusting in Christ alone. This is the rest that the author of Hebrews is talking about, simple faith in Jesus alone. Now, we are free from the Levitical law and the ceremonial law, but we're not free from the moral law. In Romans Chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So here we see a superseding law. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ supersedes the law that is of sin and death. Verse 3, For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. See, the law didn't do anything to make us more righteous. In fact, it's just a schoolmaster to show us that we can't do it. Verse 4 says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Jesus came and fulfilled it all for us that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So we don't keep the ceremonial law, we don't keep the Levitical law, but we keep the righteousness of the law. So too with the Ten Commandments. We keep the righteousness of the Ten Commandments. Now listen to Jesus' answer on doing the work of God. This is in John chapter 6. It was after the feeding of the 5,000. They came to Jesus in verse 28. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? So they're asking in the plural. And Jesus answers in the singular in verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom we sent. So the fact that we can believe is the work of God, not of ourselves. Now seeing that we are free from keeping the Old Testament law, Is there something that we can learn about the rest or resting in the Ten Commandments? As believers in Jesus, we're free from keeping the Sabbath. There's no question. In James 2.10, it says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble on one point, he's guilty of all. 
Those who think they're keeping the Sabbath are sadly mistaken and in great danger. In other words, if you try to keep the law and you fail on one point, you're guilty of the whole law. Paul said to Galatia, he said, having begun in the spirit, are you now perfected in the flesh? In other words, through works? Absolutely not. Jesus said in Mark chapter 2, 27, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. God is not the one who needs rest. So let's look at this thought. Can we learn something about rest in the Ten Commandments? Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now we don't keep the Sabbath now, and those who think they are keeping the Sabbath are mistaken. In the, the law, for instance, you weren't allowed to do any work which included kindling a flame. Well, if you walk over and flip a light switch, you're kindling a flame, breaking the Sabbath. Now you're guilty of the whole law. It's simply not the point. The point of the law was given to us as a schoolmaster to show us that we could not do it. We do not keep the Sabbath, but can we learn from it? Certainly we can. In essence, that if we stop working one day a week and simply seek Him and trust Him, he will make sure that our labor six days a week would be enough to sustain us. This also would keep our focus on trusting Him and keeping us from greed. Godliness with contentment is great gain. So the takeaway from this Devo. Number one, let us therefore be diligent, or literally to labor, to enter that rest. Labor in studying the Word of God and in prayer until we are fully convinced and fully trusting in the finished work of Christ, thereby attaining unto the righteousness that is by faith in Christ alone and not the law, not the works or the efforts of man. And two, set aside one day a week, whatever. If you have to work Sunday, pick another day and rest and seek the Lord. Set aside one day a week and cease from physical labor. Spend time with your heavenly Father, trusting Him to supply all our needs through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So twofold, come to the place where you're fully trusting in Christ and His finished work. And two, God gave us a place of rest. And if we take advantage of that, our bodies are going to do a lot better and our focus won't be on keeping up with the Joneses or greater financial gain. No, it won't be greed. We'll be simply trusting the Lord. If we work six days and trust Him for the seventh, He said He'd make sure it would be enough. Father, thank You for these immutable truths. And Lord, ask that You would give further revelation this week to the other pastors and through to all the congregation. In Jesus' name, amen.